Hello there! So I've been very efficient with posting videos lately it seems. I've just been having a lot of fun with it really. It's nice to have a side project like making a video to work on when I'm a bit tired of just trying to come up with things to do on my sketchbook for example. But speaking of sketchbook, I'm actually working on my sketchbook in this video. Like, fancy that. I've been trying to think of a way to film working traditionally for ages. I think I mentioned in my last video that I have a sort of... I tried with an acrylic painting I did but I didn't click record on the camera and it was set up weird on the tripod anyway so I have a before photo and an after photo which I would have taken on my phone anyway um, instead of having a video because I just pressed... it was in... my camera was in photo mode, I thought it was in filming mode so it's not my fault but so for here I know that um, some of my friends and people starting out with making YouTube videos of drawing and stuff, they have this clamp with an arm thing that they put on their desk and then they use to prop up their phone to film them drawing from like a downwards, uh, upwards, down, fr from above angle sort of thing. But um, well, I got a new phone recently, but before that my phone had been always struggling to have space in it, so even if I had the clamp, I wouldn't have the space on my phone to be able to just even have a 30 minute video on it. So that wasn't really an option. What I did for this video, which I think I'm going to try to repeat, is I have a glass desk and I have an iPad. I don't struggle with space with the iPad because it's it has a lot more space than my phone. Um, so I left the iPad facing down on my desk and then I sat under my desk with my laptop table just working there on the floor. And if you're concerned for my back, I am too, but I think it's worth it. We'll see, I'll try to figure out things like take lots of breaks and all those the, if I get more into filming this method. But the video came out fairly nice. My iPad has a pretty decent camera and with traditional drawing, uh, when I'm doing like the editing for the video and all that, I find that I can crop in to where I'm working on. It's not like in digital art where I'm rotating and panning and zooming in and zooming out and doing all that. I can do that in the video. So, see right there, I just zoomed in so I can show off better the inking and it's not to hide the bits of my hair that pop up from the bottom of the frame. I promise it's not to hide that at all. Um, so yeah, this was a bit of a learning experience. I think the next time I film something like this, it'll come out better. I do have to rely on daylight for lighting, but it's summer here in Canada, so I'm not too worried on the daylight front because it's daylight from 4.30am to 9pm and it gets really bright even when it's rainy, so yeah, I'm not too concerned. And here I am inking, well the materials that I used in this video was uh, to sketch I had a mechanical pencil, just a regular 0.5 graphite mechanical pencil. I prefer sketching with mechanical pencil because I think it's worth it to not have to worry about sharpening to always have a consistent sort of feel for like the thickness of your pencil. And the graphite that I use is HB. I know that some, I was just having this talk with my friend that uh, some art teachers, I can't believe that art teachers would like ban HB graphite from being used for art. Honestly, just use whatever graphite you're comfortable with. Yeah, you can't get that contrasty with HB, but like, it doesn't smudge that much. 2B, 6B, they smudge like crazy. HBs are really nice for sketching, even though it doesn't get contrasty. That's what we have ink for. So anyway, yeah, just an HP lead uh, mechanical pencil, and here I have a very, very, very old Micron fine liner. I got this set, I think, nine years ago? Yeah, and it's not that it, the ink has lasted me this long. I promise you the ink has not lasted this long. I've refilled it twice, and there's videos online on how you could try to refill Microns. Honestly, just try your best, and if you see that the, the back end of it is all, like, messed up, is because I was trying to pry the back off with some pliers and it didn't work so just yeah but I find it's more cost effective if you can just refill it and also this is like my my sketchbook fine liner this is the fine liner that I keep in my travel case so it's in my essentials it's just so it's, just, it's sort of a throwaway fine liner it's one of my oldest and I refilled it with my own ink so I just like using it in my sketchbook so I don't feel bad for wasting materials if it's this one. I have um, better condition newer fine liners that I do when I want to make a more ambitious piece. Um, 
And for colouring, I'm using Prismacolor colour pencils. I have a 150 set that I got for a birthday for my parents. Thank you, Mom and Dad. And they come in very handy. So for skin tones, I only picked three colours. I don't remember their names, but it's one of the lighter ones. I know the mid one is peach. That's my favourite mid-tone uh, Prismacolor pencil. It's called peach. And then um, a sort of purpley shadow, which I wish would be more purple, actually. I think I had a stronger purple, but... Uh, well, not purple purple, like a purple skin tone shadow. But um, I dropped the whole case of Prismacolors once when I was cleaning my bookcase and then all my pencils fell out of order. So I don't know where exactly that... that Because it's not in the tray that I had of skin tones anymore. Or if it is, I've, I've misplaced it. But yeah, so... Skin tones. I, I find colour pencils. I stopped using colour pencils for a couple of years because I got really into just painting, sketching without colouring or just working digitally. Mostly I spent about a year and a half only working in like pencil for sketching without fully completing almost anything. But now I've been more like I, I'm determined that in this sketchbook I don't have a single page that's only pencil. Even if it's just gesture studies, I should just grab a highlighter and make some notes or add a floor to all my gestures, that sort of thing. So if the result of not wanting to leave any page of only pencils is me having inked a lot more things whether with my fine liner or with a ballpoint pen or and also me having colored more things with color pencils mostly because they're the most easiest thing to use and honestly i find that i like usually i used my my pads of mixed media paper that i have to do like a fully rendered color pencil piece but the mixed media paper had a very well, not very pronounced, but more pronounced tooth to the page than, say, printer paper. But printer paper is a bit flimsy, and honestly, at this point, unless it's a base sketch, I don't really want to use printer paper to do any artwork. But the sketch rig, it has paper that's like nicer than printer paper, but it's smoother than my mixed media paper. So it's just so much nicer to use colour pencils on this, and I think I should just try to make another illustration on my mixed media paper with my colour pencils just to remind myself how, ni how nice I have it in my sketchbook that it, it, it lays down so even and nice. Um, I don't know if I mentioned but the draw the character I'm drawing here is my original character Tiris. She's a ghost and I have plans to make a sort of, it's, it's not going to be super long but it's not going to be just like a couple panels but a comic of hers. But this is about the finished drawing. Please make sure to follow me on all social media, like and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.